بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد. So moving on, we are going to be discussing the last two uh, ways mentioned in this book of how to do itnab and bring speech in a more lengthy than usual manner. Okay. The first is to say wa minha al ihtiras. What's ihtiras mean? Haris, what's a haris? A guard. So ihtiras means to guard your speech literally. Huwa an yuta fi kalamin. So here, yuta wa bima yadfa'uhu. So where do you bring it? Fi kalamin yuhimu khilaf al maqsud. Ihtiras is that in a speech which gives, which gives the impression of or gives out the impression of something which is contrary to the, the speaker's purpose. You bring something which removes that misconception. So in a kalam, which gives a misconception of something which the speaker has not intended, khilaf al maqsud. You bring something which removes this what? Misconception. Okay, for example, here's a poem. Again, uh, poems are always brought because why? To show that, look, the Arabs who spoke at the time of Revelation is how they spoke. Like, for example, when you have a question, oh, the Quran, that you, have, you go from mutakallim to ghaib and ghaib to what's all this? So, well, that's how the Arabs spoke. Look, this is, that's, how the, that's how the language was. So, to us, it seems strange, but that's how the Arabs used to speak. That's why, even though we might I bring Quran examples, etc., in theory, these Quran examples are not really proof. The examples, not proofs. Proofs are the, the Arabic poetry. That Arabs spoke like this. But you get what I'm saying? So we have to bring Arabic poetry to show the proof. And the Quranic, the Quranic, text, the Quranic text are not evidences, they're just what? Examples. To show so we understand it. But in your reality, for example, any, anything you want, to, you want to prove, you can't prove it by the Quran because you say, I don't believe in the Quran. Or the Quran wasn't eloquent. So you can say, well, look, the Arabs spoke like this and the Quran was in that language. Obviously, we believe, so for, for believers, it's not a problem. Non believers who have a question, then this is not enough for them. Anyways, Fasaqa diyaraka, diyaraki. He's speaking to his mahbuba. So he says, Fasaqa, Saqa is fairly mahdi, but the meaning is mudari. Why? For dua. Fasaqa diyaraki. This is ghayra mufsidiha. Sawbur rabi'i. Now, some have daima, some have dima. You can pray it both ways. Daima tun ya dima tun tahmi. May sawbur rabi'i. So may the winds and the rain of rabi'i. Rabi is what? Spring. May the, may the rains of spring and the mizzles, which continue, mizzles, the mizzle, hamayahmi means continue, continue fall, mizzle. Satiate your house. Basically, saying, may Allah, not, but I don't know if he doesn't believe, but they believe Allah, anyways, even the non Muslim before Islam, that may Allah, saqad ya raki safa'in. May this. The rain of the spring and mizzles and continuous mizzles satiate or quench your house. Meaning, how does it quench your house? By raining on your house. So he's making dua for his mahbubah that rain come onto your house. Your house may not be dry and barren. It become nice and uh, moist and lots of grass grow around it, trees grow around it. Okay? So may, may this, is, this is what? The Yaraki is what? Maf'ool. And this is hal. Okay? But, so, فَسَقَى دِيَارَكِ سَوْبُ الرَّبِيِّ وَدَيْمَةٌ دِيمَةٌ تَهْمِي What's this? This is what? احتراس. This is, this, this hal, that's what? Protects the kalam from misinterpreting it. Because it could be what? So much rain. دِيمَةٌ 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 تَهْمِي غَيْرَ مُفْسِدِهَا Which does not corrupt it, spoil it, destroy it. So, may rains of the spring and continuous mizzles feed Quench, satiate your house without spoiling it. Call it ihtiras. Come to the Quran. Wadmum yadaka ila janahik takhruj bayza amin ghayri su ayat al ukhra. So Allah says to Musa, put your hand here and pull it out. When you pull it out, it becomes white. So takhruj bayza is going to come out in what color? White color. But obviously, you might think white, and that's not normal. Like, normally, skins are brown. White, like, when you say white, it means like this is white. This is not. So even though people who we call white, they still have a brownness to the skin, slight brownness. This is absolute white. Nobody's this color. And it's have that kind of it's got some kind of pigmentation problem. So I have a slight, but it's less less color than others, but it's not white, white. That's why they call it ahmar. That's when the hadith says, be khayri min aswad wala ahmar. You're not better than an aswad or ahmar. So they call it, let's call it white, it's called ahmar. Ahmar means not red, like a red color, like this red color. They meant ahmar as in 
very white skin with a slight redness to it. Do you understand? So do you know, the Arabs never call it white, they call it Ahmar. We call it white in our language, but uh, absolute whiteness is what? That's not normal. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So straight away when you say Takhrud Bayza, it comes out white. I think, what's going to happen? It's a, it's a ihtiras. Why? By saying without any illness, without any kind of difficulty or harm coming upon you, that's how it will come out. It will come out white, but without any difficulty, harm, or problems. Do you understand? This is, this is ihtiras. Another example. Wa Dawood wa Sulaiman. Allah says, remember Dawood and Sulaiman. Iz yahkumani fil harth. When there was a dispute in regards to a, in regards to a, uh, a, a farmland or area. Id nafashat fihi ghanamun qam. One group, they, their sheep, they got, they went, they rocked the havoc. Wa kunna lukmihim shahideen. Fafahamnaha Sulaiman. So Dawood made, alayhi salatu salam, he made one decision. But Sulaiman, he made a better decision regarding them. Fafahamnaha Sulaiman. We give Sulaiman the ability to understand that. And he made a better decision. So Sulaiman's decision was right, correct. But sometimes you can do something correct, but something better. Yes. Do you understand? Like, for example, say, okay, well, you have to pay a 500 pound compensation. That's okay, that's, that's good. But what we can do is that, look, 500 pound for him will not be the best option. Why don't we give five to 500 pound of his labor? So it's not too hard on him, and he needs that labor anyways. So more compromising. So it wasn't that Dawood, his decision was wrong. But it was that Suleiman's decision was better, more appropriate, and was easier for both parties. Okay? But when you say, Fahamna ha Suleiman, what might I think straight away? That Suleiman, he has hikmah and ilm, not Dawood. So Allah says, wa kullan aatayna hukma wa ilma. Don't, mis don't misunderstand this here. That Dawood, Nauzu Billahi Nidhali alayhi salatu wa salam, was not educated or he was not had ilm and hikmah and his decision was wrong. No, it's not like that. But Suleiman at that time was granted tawfiq from Allah and he gave a better decision. Okay? You got it? Acha. Wa minha at takmil. The last, this is, this is the last form of it now mentioned in the book. It is what? yu'ta bi fadlatin. That you bring a fadla, meaning, what's fadla mean? Not musnad, not musnad ilayh, something extra. What's a fadla mean? So you have, um, so you have umdatul kalam. So umda is what? The, the root source, meaning musnad and musnad ilayh, nothing beyond that. Yeah. And fadla is something extra, meaning beyond musnad and musnad ilayh. You bring something extra. Tazidul ma'na husnan, which increases the beauty of the meaning. Okay? Yut'imun al ta'ama. Miskeen, uh, Allah says in the Quran, Yut'imun al-ta'am ala hubbihi miskeenan wa yatimah wa asira. So Allah says Yut'imun al-ta'am. They feed what? They feed food, meaning they give people who are in need food. So that's enough, isn't it? But by adding ala hubbihi, what does that mean? So you can have two meanings. The Hizami can either refer to ala ta'am. Ala ta'am or ala al al mal. So despite loving the food or the money which purchases the food, so despite loving that, what do they do? You take ta'am. Yes, I want that person. You got so much that money doesn't really, you know, it doesn't really bother you. Something like, okay, I need this, I want this money, but I still, for the sake of Allah, will feed those who are in need. Mm -hmm. So by adding this, ta'am, ala hubbihi. Okay? Or some say, the hubbihi is the mean first to ala hubbillah. For the love of Allah. So this ala hubbihi it increases the meaning. Okay? You follow? Okay. Now, there's one point that we need to uh, clarify here. I need to explain to you that this word takmil in Durusul Balagha, they've used it, but it, they haven't used it the way the majority of the scholars of Balagha, the Ahlul Balagha, use it. Okay? Okay, so in Durusul Balagha, what, what have they done in Durusul Balagha? They said this, this is what they use. Okay? They said that if you have a ziyadati, something extra, and that removes an, uh, the a misconception. That's called ihtiras. Correct? That's, this is Durus Balaga. And if you've got something ziyada, but it increases the meaning, what do you call this? Takmil. Oh. Okay? That's what they have said here. But in other books, majority of other books, ihtiras and takmil is the same thing. They said takmil is ihtiras. Do you follow? And they call this concept here takmim. Do you understand? So this is where majority, especially in books of Balaga, this is what they would, this is what they normally use. This is ihtiras or takmil. So takmil and ihtiras the same thing. So takmil is a complete meaning. You complete a sentence to get up to mis remove any misconceptions. And they call this tatmim, meaning you've now perfecting and make it even more complete. Okay? 
So this, this, uh, this naming in those Balaga is not what the majority of the scholars have done. Okay? You got it? Achha. So look. So look. Tat Tatmim is what? You add in extra word and the extra word creates more meaning, more beauty in the meaning. For example, let's say about the Sahaba. وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ If you just stop there, you can get the message across perfectly, don't you? That the Sahaba were such people, as we're describing them, that they gave preference to others over themselves. Mm. Yeah? But to add to this, what did they say? وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خصاصة. Even if they themselves undergo loss, difficulty or hardship. Mm. Do you understand? So this is what? Tatmeem. Tatmeem. What is this? Tatmeem. You following? Another example. Ya bunayya. This is a mistake. Innaha. Intaku. This is again. Innaha intaku mithqala habbatin min khardal. Okay? This is enough. Oh my son. Hazrat Luqman alayhi salatu was salam. He's advising and giving nasiha to his son. What did he say? Ya, oh my son. If there is a mithqal. We did mithqal already. Didn't last time. Mithqal. A very small, um, uh, minute amount. Equivalent to what? Khardal is mustard seed. And habba is a, as, a, as a grain. If there's a grain, uh, the weight of a grain of a, uh, a mustard seed is very, very small. Ya'ti bi Allah, Allah can even bring that forward. If you do that much good deed, Allah will bring that forward. But not to even add more meaning to how. So if you've got this much, even Allah can bring forward. Allah has knowledge of even this amount of every atom. But let's add to it. Fatakun fi sakhra. And then this what? This. Mithqalu uh, Habba, where is it? In the Sakhra, or in the Samawat, or in the Ard. Even if it's in a, if, even if within there is a rock, within that rock there's a, there's a mustard seed. So it gives even more emphasis, it gives, it, it gives more husn to the meaning. Do you understand? So if you had just said, Taku Mithqalu Habba, Timi Khardin, Ata Ayati Biha Allah. But to add more husn, Fatakun fi Sakhra, or in the Samawat, or in the Ard, inside the earth, within the earth. Even Allah has knowledge about that. Do you understand? Mm. Even a particle that we have on our fingers that is in the broad daylight, even a particle under the sofa, a particle in, the, in a, a wormhole, Allah has knowledge about that. You got it? Yeah? Look like at this one now, this is beautiful. Ayawaddu ahadukum, Allah is talking about, Allah is talking, Allah is talking, Allah is talking, Ayawaddu ahadukum, would one of you like, an takun lahu jannatun min nakhini wa'nab? He has gardens of, of, de, of date palms, grape vines, tajiri min tahti al anahar, Whole life, what did he do? He worked, he earned money. And when he's, what does he have now at his old age? Gardens, produce, income. Okay? Then, what kibar. What has what happened now? He's reached old age. Okay? Let's do this up for now. Okay? Okay, let's, 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 let's miss out as well. Okay? So, what's happened now? It's a scenario. You spent your whole life. Doing what? Work. Work. Finally, you acquired some gardens and grapevines in those days. Mm. And this beautiful garden with water flowing. And, and then what happens? All of a sudden, a hurricane comes. The hurricane comes and destroys this. So I'll give you a parable. It's really bad, isn't it? But if you look at this, Allah says, you die, you're old, and everything is destroyed. You might think, Chalo, that's what it's like. Ten years left, maximum five years. I'm old, anyways. I'll die. I only got a few years left in poverty. Everything is gone. My whole heart life is gone. I'll die soon, anyways. But then, walahu dhuriyatun duafa. You have progeny, your children who are weak and also poor. So it's even more. You you worry about even if you die, you worry about what now, your children. So this is what. Tatmim. You see how it increases the beauty of the meaning. Not only are you old, if you say, okay, you're old, and then everything goes, the whole life effort goes, okay, so I'm going to die anyways one day. So you could counsel you you yourself that I'm going to die, okay, I live my life, but what about your children? Okay? You have, a, you have a whirlwind or some kind of twister. Yeah? That might destroy, not so fast. Imagine a twister, which, along with it, sometimes you can get, if you got, uh, what do you call it, you got a, a fire. And then wind start developing around that fire, you can get to, you can actually get a firestorm. Mm. So it's like a firestorm. So not only is it gonna the wind will destroy even if it's like a hurricane on its own, that's enough to destroy the whole the whole garden and the harvest. But 
the, when, the, when the thing comes with it, the, the fire comes with it, completely destroys it, totally. So, both of these are what? That's mean. So, you see how this extra wording has increased the meaning. This is called that's mean. Beautiful, isn't it? Do you understand? Any question regarding this? Subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanakallahumma, bihamdika, wa nashallah, ilaha illa anta, 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 wa nashallah, 